Good evening, everybody. In this video, I'm going to discuss the environmental problems of temperate region. As you all are aware, the past one century has brought increasing affluence and power to the countries in temperate ecosystem. Their production of material wealth and consumption of goods are also among the highest in the world. The capital, technology, goods are fueling globalization that carries the unprecedented opportunities and risk. Private consumption per capita in these countries is five times the global average. These regions with five to seven percent of world population consume about 25 percent of the total energy. It is the countries of this region which has found number of patents. These are regions of key assets, of knowledge-based economy and scientific know-how. Past half century has also brought increasingly conscious struggle of balance continued with economic growth and environmental aspects along with the social objectives. Let us discuss now what are the major problems in the temperate region. The discussion here will include general introduction of the temperate ecosystem, its extent and general understanding. The problems will be discussed under atmospheric challenges, hydrological issues, biodiversity loss, land degradation, and the challenges to human community. As you know, that you know these countries of the temperate region are the countries with highest per capita income great lifestyle yes the production and consumption patterns have definitely created a lot of environmental issues the extent of temperate zone is between tropics and the polar regions north and southern hemisphere this allows the numerous types of habitat, including forest and grasslands. It covers most of the continental states, United States and Europe. They also cover large areas of Asia, parts of Australia and South America. If we see the extent of uh, temperate region in the map, you can see from Tropic of Cancer to Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and from Tropic of Capricorn to Antarctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere. The types of temperate biomes include the forests, grasslands and chaparral. The forests are temperate rainforest and the deciduous forest. Grasslands, which are known by different names in different parts of the world. Chaparral. It's a special kind of a forest, which is actually a shrub forest dominated by densely growing evergreen shrubs and small trees. Here, the problems will be discussed. Which will include atmospheric, hydrological, biodiversity, land degradation and human community. Let us now come to atmospheric challenges. WHO lists six toxic air pollutants, carbon monoxide, lead, nitrogen, dioxides, SPM, and sulfur dioxide. North America emits more greenhouse gases than any other region, accounting for about 5% of the world population and 26% of the global anthropogenic emissions of CO2. In many urban centers, there are 
a problem of high concentration of tropospheric ozone, which also reacts. When it reacts with nitrogen oxide and volatile organic compounds, in particularly in the urban centers, which are prone to stagnant air masses. Although many European countries are enthusiastic components of global climate change treaties, the region is still major emitter of anthropogenic greenhouse gases. In spite of a variety of mission control programs in North America, evidences suggest that many sensitive areas still receive acid precipitation. New concerns have also arise. That is the ground level ozone and the fine particulate matter. Transport sector alone is responsible for 60% of NOx in US and Canada. Let us talk about the hydrological problems. Overloaded with organic matter, nitrogen phosphorus resulted in the eutrophication of sea, lakes, rivers, and groundwater throughout Europe. The Great Lakes in US and Canada have been subjected to a variety of pollution. The global warming would lower the lake levels by the middle of the century, which will have the impact of social and economic nature. Discharge of number of persistent toxic chemicals in water bodies has been significant, particularly because of the rapid industrial development. There is increasingly evidence that bloom of toxic and otherwise undesirable phytoplanktons are increasing in frequency, intensity, and geographic distribution. 85% of European coasts are at high risk from development-related pressure. Tourism, along with the Atlantic coast, make a huge contribution to the water scarcity and pollution. In the temperate region North of North America, Europe, Australia, South America, there is heavy urban growth, and these coastal cities are leading to major physical degradation of marine resources and, of course, the pollution as well. Now, I'm going to talk about biodiversity loss. Forests in temperate regions are showing the effects of global warming. There is increase of one to two degrees Celsius temperature and changing precipitation has also been documented. It is expected that the temperate forest will migrate northward 100 to 500 kilometers over the course of the next century. Experts believe the high levels of CO2 have already caused reduction in the coastal vegetation in Pacific and Atlantic. Intensive agriculture has led to the damage of freshwater habitat and impacted the wildlife. About one third of North America wetland species are threatened. Bioinvasion is also one of the important problems faced. Now look into the land degradation. Damage of European soil from sealing of soil, local and diffuse contamination, soil erosion, huge irrigation and hydroelectric projects in Eastern Europe have also caused salinization and water logging. One UNEP uh, estimate says that 23% of all usable land mass has been affected by degradation to a sufficient degree to reduce productivity. Challenges to human community. The impact of harmful LV include impact on the human health and death by consumption of contaminated fish. Tropospheric ozone concentration are also a big threat to human health and the vegetation cover. Thinning of ozone layer threatens human health. Recent health impact assessment of air pollution in Austria 
France and Switzerland reveal that vehicular pollution kills more people in these places. A total number of deaths in these countries from the road accident is one around 2000, whereas lack, three lakh extra cases of bronchitis in children, four lakh asthma cases in adults has been reported. Around 80 million US citizens are exposed to higher levels of pollution. 5.5 million children in North America are affected by asthma. The urban areas are so-called larger ecological footprints. For example, London, with a 12% of UK population, but it comes to 125 times larger than the area it can support. Similarly, if we look at the case study of Canada, which says that Canada, uh, it is calculated to be 1,000, more than 1,000 times larger than the area Canada can actually support. In fact, uh, if we see that temperate regions of the world are consist of the mold, most important nation. But yes, with the kind of production, consumption pattern, and the impact of anthropogenic activities on the environment are much, much larger. It needs, though, the entire world is talking about various treaties, protocols at local level, regional level, and the global level. Yet, the world is struggling to cope up with the environmental issues. Here in this slide, you can see some of the uh, important references, various UN reports and UNEP reports that, are with, that would be very helpful if you would like to proceed further in this, to explore further the environmental problems in temperate regions. Thank you, and uh, I'm sure uh, this uh, small video will help you understand more about the environmental problems of different nature in the tropical, uh, sorry, in the temperate region. Thank you.